What's cooking, you fitness fans? Welcome back to your old lady's favorite YouTube channel. Out of the frying pan, into the proverbial fire. Juventus have some difficult topics we need to talk about today. Not all good news, it may be called the Bad News Bears episode when it comes to Juventus news that we do here on the channel, but we're going to walk you through it each step of the way. Stick with us, we'll fill you in. Ciao ragazzi, welcome back to the Beyond Canary Zone. My name is Justin Sofro. Today, it's April 21st, 2022. It's a Thursday, and of course I have your latest rundown of all things Juventus, all the news that you care about each and every day. As quickly and hopefully as uh, gentle-handed as we can touch on these uh, topics that may not be the most fun of all the news that you've had recently. Uh, before we do anything though, please go ahead and smash that like button. Remember, a like does not mean you like the news that we talked about today. It means you like our channel. It likes what we bring to you. So please hit the like button. It helps our channel to continue to grow, to develop, especially in what I would say are difficult times for you, Vendos. These are probably the most difficult times that we've had in the last decade, especially when you're thinking about all the Scudetti we've won, nine Scudetti, and then to go on and now what we're dealing with. So like I said... Help us hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and hit that bell icon through, uh, to stay notified for all our latest videos. As we'll be with you each step of the way as Juventini, as fans of the Beyond Canary, and that's what we do here. All right, let's jump into it. The very first news of the day, of course, like I said, all fun, happy news is the UEFA information. The new UEFA uh, stuff, basically the clubs, UEFA take a win, and now Juventus are there, potentially sitting with an L alongside Barcelona and Real Madrid. Um, this is from UI Sport, who is reporting, and I apologize, this is tiny, tiny script, so I may lean in with my old man eyes and read it to you. The Commercial Court of Madrid has annulled the uh, precautionary measures against UEFA and FIFA imposed since the 20th of April, 2021. The tribunal ruled that there was no evidence that the possible sanctions on the remaining clubs would prevent the Super League project project from succeeding. In particular, the, tribu the tribunal found that the founders of the Super League, based on the statements of the SL founders, are totally independent and autonomous from the statements and decisions of UEFA and FIFA. The Court of Justice of the European Union will have the last word on the legitimacy of the Super League project. In the meantime, there is nothing to stop. There is nothing. And this is the big one. This is the big bit of news that we have today. There is nothing to stop, to stop. Why, why did I say it that way? Right, right, the bit, right, the heat of the news. I'm over here, can't even get over my tongue. There is nothing to stop UEFA from resuming disciplinary proceedings against Juventus, Real Madrid, and Barcelona. There is no longer any ban on possible economic or sporting sanctions, such as an exclusion from European competitions. With the annulment of the precautionary measures, the risk that Alexander Sheffrin or other senior UEFA executives could face criminal consequences in the EU or, Switzer or Switzerland also vanishes. So yeah, that's the big news story of the day. That's the big one. That's the big uh, unhinged uh, story that we should be worried about because of the unhinged actions of Alexander Sheffrin. We know all the nonsense that went along with him and uh, Agnelli, or not Agnelli. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Agnelli. I thought I, thought I said Allegri once again. Uh, with Agnelli, their situation, their uh, relationship has broken to turn. Agnelli was the uh, godfather of, of one of his children. Um, and then to go on with that, he has been an emotional wreck going after uh, Juventus. It seemed like Juventus, as well as Real Madrid, Barcelona, were protected by the courts of Madrid uh, back back way when. It wasn't even that long ago, less than a year ago, but it feels like it was, while it feels like it was forever ago, it also feels like it was just a couple weeks ago, if that makes sense. Especially given that the one year of the Super League just passed um, here recently. The, the first talk, the first talks of it, at least. Uh, anyway, what this means for Juventus is it could be bad, guys. It could be really bad for Juventus if Alexander Sheffrin has his way. If UEFA, FIFA, whatever, have their way, they can do what they want with Juventus, Barcelona, Madrid. They can give them any kind of sanctions, punishments they want. They can cripple Juventus and Madrid and Barcelona when it comes to the players that they want to get in this upcoming Mercado. The dreams of Big Z coming here could be done. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Trying to bring some levity to this situation. But I cannot, I cannot uh, stress this to you more. This is a big deal. This is something that could be uh, very serious when it comes to the future of the three clubs and the um, their comp their uh, their level of competition that they can really bring uh, here 
in the next few years. Um, unless things change either when it comes to the next level of the court system, um, deciding, you know, the legitimacy of the Super League, uh, the how, how they can be protected, um, or in, I guess right now, if it depends, if Agnelli going to go all in on this, you better hope. You better know and you better hope that the Super League is going to come out on top, as in the Super League is going to be the primo, the primo, no, not the pre-ultimate, the ultimate competition when it comes, I, was, I, mean, I, I messed up saying uh, penultimate, right? Anyway, it, that it's going to be the ultimate competition in the football world, that it's going to be the one thing that everybody wants to go to. Juventus, Real Madrid, Barcelona, great. But you also got to get the Premier League clubs. You got to get the, um, you know, even likes of PSG, maybe. Who cares about them, honestly? Uh, you got to get them on board. You got to get Inter, maybe. Mil like, so you, you know, you get, get Milan on board. Inter can stay where they are. Inter, you stay there. You, you, you chill out. Um, you know, and the other clubs, the other big dogs when it comes to uh, competitions worldwide, you got to bring them in. So, you got to have them under your fold. Otherwise, Juventus and Real Madrid and Barcelona are in a sticky situation. Um, punishment sanctions can be handed down. Um, also, this makes me wonder, what does it mean for the future of the club? When I say the club, I mean the president, all the stuff we've, heard, we've talked about, all the rumors we've heard um, re recently when it comes to, you know, and Yelly, his situation, uh, those that have been floated about. Obviously, we have some news covering that, uh, a little bit of that later. Uh, but what does that mean? Uh, what would that portend for his future with Juventus? Because um, really, it's been under his leadership and his guidance that all this stuff has happened. Um, you know, I think my personal opinion is I think the Super League is the way of the future. It's the way that, uh, that, the you know the football world should go. I don't need UEFA and FIFA whispering in my ear telling me that what they're doing is great and for the better uh, the betterment of competition. I don't need uh, any words from them telling me how good this is for the fans and how much it's good for the fans. If it were good for the fans, um, FIFA, who's somewhere involved with that as well, wouldn't be playing in Cutter this year. We wouldn't be playing under slave labor and Cutter. There would be no chance of that happening. So I don't want to hear any kind of indignation from anybody when it comes to UEFA. FIFA, FIFA and any of their just bull crap to be honest it's all bull crap if you pay them enough money they will let you do whatever you want you can run rampant I'm sorry this is me standing on my soapbox I guess when it comes to that I don't want to hear it. it's nonsense um yeah that was a hot take for me I know you get that sometimes from, from me on the channel anyway I don't think it's that hot it shouldn't be that hot if it is a hot take come talk to me come, come have a chat with me and let me know what you think about that anyway when it comes to Juventus it is worrisome. It's something we're going to need to monitor to see what happens or see what Sheffrin does when he starts spouting off and saying things that need to happen. But honestly, for the good of the sport, the good of, good of the actual teams, the good of the players, the good of the fans, the best thing that really could happen would be something like the Super League. The Super League would be better for Juventus in multiple different aspects. The money coming in, the competition, the fans get to watch better games. Uh, don't tell me, you know, don't piss on my leg and tell me that it's raining. It's not true uh, when it comes to, um, you know, the... the UEFA Champions League being a better competition for anybody. I don't believe it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Are you worried? Do you think this is a situation that you would just once again, uh, I, I think a lot of times people keep doing the, um, you know, the, the meme, the, what's it called, where they're like, oh, we'll see how he wiggles out of this one. And it's like he easily wiggles out of this one. So maybe that'll hopefully happen again. As a Juventus fan, I'm hoping another thing that we, um, you know, maybe overhype and over over worry about. But Sheffrin is unhinged. That's where my eyes are going to be at. That's where I'm going to be glued at. What are his moves? What is he going to try to do in the meantime? All right, let's continue it on. Next up, we got to talk about Allegri and his future. Romeo Agresti uh, had mentioned uh, some comments. I think basically just kind of re uh, reiterating what we've been telling you on the channel. And he's saying that it, uh, it, it's impossible to imagine Max Allegri leaving Juventus after just one season. And I completely agree. We talk about the relationship that he and Agnelli have. We talk about his history. We talk about, you know, obviously there's been the issues with Sadi and then the experiment with Pirlo, how all that went. Uh, you know, you can differ on your opinion on who should have gotten more time, whatever. Um, Allegri is going to get that more time, though, because of his relationship with Agnelli. Um, You know, I can only, I doubt, even if, uh, even if Juventus somehow fail to make fourth place, um, and this thing really collapses here at the end. Uh, luckily, we had a little bit of positivity with the victory against Fiorentina. Um, we'll see what happens. But I, I, I'm right now. I, I consider myself doubtful that anything will happen um, 
with Allegri in his status right now with Juventus. All right, let's continue it on. The Sun, maybe some positive news out there for some of you guys. Um, but basically, the Sun's reporting that Emerson Palmieri, owned by Chelsea but on loan at Lyon, has set his priority. Despite being courted by Juve and other clubs, the player's desires to rant remain in France. So if he has the opportunity, he will stay with Lyon, which I know a lot of people, Alejandro on the channel uh, included, will be happy to hear um, that potentially Palmieri will not be really an option, a serious option there at the left back position due to his own uh, preferences to remain um, in France there to play for that team. Uh, let's continue on. Next topic. Uh, here we go. More bad news. <laughs> this is, I guess this isn't bad news, but it's competition news, right? Obviously, and you don't love it. it this It's the Sun reporting. And it's a crap source, but we're going to talk about it. Uh, I think this is probably going to be honest, though. I think anybody could probably read the room. If you're you know a top-level team wanting top-level um, players, this is who you go for. So they're report, reporting that Malinkovic Savage, yeah, that Malinkovic Savage, our boy Malinkovic Savage, the guy we're just calling home. Come on home to us, my guy. Um is Manchester United's market priority at this time. So at this time, if Manchester United can throw enough money at him, they will try to bring him in, uh, bring him to England, bring him to the Premier League. Obviously, Juventus are want to compete with that. Um, if he decides to end up going uh, to Manchester United, I wonder what that means reading out. Because obviously, I feel like he would be the replacement there uh, for the other big big midfield um, target for Juventus, Paul Pogba, who will be leaving Manchester United um, as it seems that all relationships, um, any kind of that, it's it's gone cold. It's not really good there in the relationship there. He's done. He's ready to move on uh, from Manchester United. Um so that's something to watch out for. I, I mean, a lot of these pieces we talked about recently how all these different clubs are all associated within each other. Uh, Manchester United, PSG, Juventus, how they're all going for Pogba's, Malinkovic Savage, whoever have you. Um, they're going to go and look at who they can get and try to pick and, you know, if one goes there, it means one of the other options probably could be going to the other one. So we'll keep an eye on that. All right, all right, all right. Um, this is another one, just a midfield update uh, from TNT Sports. is reporting that Enzo Fernandez is an idea of Juventus, the midfielder. He's a 2001 player, so he's 21 years old or about thereabouts. Uh, playing at River Plate, uh, the cost of the player is about 20 million euros. Um, don't really have a lot of comments on this. I, uh, When it comes to this player, let me know if you have any strong feelings on him. The one thing that really sticks out to me, though, is... Um, you know, I, I want to see where this market's heading. Is if, is this developing differently than we expected or that we may have been promised? Um, there's a lot of young names that are popping up. Obviously, you know, as the Mercado it hasn't even taken off yet, you're going to start hearing more and more names. Uh, how many are legitimate as well as is the promise of a big time get a big splash, if you will, is that happening or is it not happening? Um, Cause if we, if you're going to end up getting Enzo Fernandez and um, you know, whatever, whatever is it, I can't even remember the other one I talked about the other day, uh, these smaller name team players, if you're going to get two or three of those, I'm not going to be impressed. And I'm sure Juventus fans will not be happy there either. Uh, so we'll see what happens there, especially some of these young players in the midfield. I'd rather be, you know, utilizing Medetti or Fajoli than than bringing in some of these young guys. I that's my personal opinion. All right. Next up, we talk about Marata and his situation. This is another bad news Bears one. Uh, Mundo Deportivo are reporting that Arsenal are planning to offer 30 million euros for Alvaro Marata uh, to obviously um, Atletico Madrid for him to come play for them. Um, that would not be great news because that would mean another opposite, another position that Juventus would need to replace another attacking um, player. Obviously we talk about the Raspadori, um, big Z and names like that, that could come in to help the attack. Um, but the more you have to replace with Paulo Dybala leaving as well, um, it, you got a lot of work to do in this Mercado then. I would think the better option would be, and I think um, even Alvaro Minata will see uh, what he decides if that's somewhere where he would want to uh, go to Arsenal or not. Uh, obviously, if he rejects Arsenal, um, then that would be that would be a situation where he could try to you know help Juventus in their negotiations there and getting the player. Uh, but if it's 30 million euros and all parties agree, then we're SOL when it comes to that. So we'll see. Keep a monitor on that situation of Alvaro Marata and where that goes from here. All right, next up is uh, Manchester the Evening News is reporting that Manchester United and that of Antonio Rudiger have no deal. 
Um, Antonio Rudiger says no and continues to deal with Juventus. So as it's being reported, there's still a high level of interest there. We've talked about some of the, you know, Badia Shield and different players like that. That could be options that could come to Juventus. Uh, but right now, it still seems like there's some negotiations going on to try to bring in Antonio Rudiger, who would be a very, very good center back defender to bring in. Um, it's just those wages. Like, again, I still stand pretty firm on any kind of money that's more than uh, what our guy um Matias Delict is making would be a little bit preposterous if we're being honest. Uh, but we'll see what happens there as that continues to develop. And then the final news story of the day is Tudor Sport that's saying that the return of Del Piero was not about him joining the club. And what it means is the return of Del Piero would, was just a celebration of a legend who took advantage of his stay in Tadine. At the moment, there are no plans for other management revolutions after last summer's one. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not going to say that I don't believe this because I, I tend to believe that Agnelli will still be the, the president of Juventus and will continue on as usual. What I will say is this is a situation to monitor. I mean, all, they're all situations to monitor, right? And it's probably what you're hearing from me now uh, a lot more than anything uh, in the recent days. But this is something to monitor to see if there's potential uh, Del Piero obviously is uh, building his brand. Build, I mean, not that the brand hasn't already been built at Juventus, but building his brand internationally. Uh, he's at the United States. He's got a you know a restaurant here. He's doing ESPN reporting there. Um, you know, people are getting to know the face. They're seeing Del Piero. He's becoming more than just an Italian thing. He's becoming an international, um, you know, uh, icon. I mean, if he if he hasn't already been, uh, if he hasn't been already. Um, so it'll be, we'll see what happens there. We'll see what develops. I think if some of this UEFA stuff, if, if some of this stuff, um, comes to fruition, if, um, you know, Sheffrin is able to go and hack away at Juventus, hack away at Real Madrid, hack away at Barcelona, and we're seeing a lot more, um, you know, worrisome outcomes. And then, you know, Agnelli is holding firm to what he's doing. I wonder if potentially Juventus could decide to make a move. Uh, we know Elkin has some of his feelings, and uh, there, you know, we've seen the words of, of you know the Elkin family. If not, you know, John Elkin, we've seen other Elkins tweeting out um, disapproval for the season the way it's gone with an, with uh, Allegri. So definitely keep an eye on that because I do wonder if maybe you know if enough pieces fall into place that moves could happen. Um, you know, I, again, I still stand pretty firm that, you know, I, obviously I think if anything ever happens down the line and, uh, and then Yelly decides to step down that Del Piero would be a fantastic option to replace him. But at the same time, um, and Yelly's done a lot of great things uh, over the last decade. Yeah. There's been a lot of, you know, there's not been a lot, but there's been some negative things as well. But he's done a lot of good things for Juventus, getting Juventus, you know, that streak of nine Scudetti, uh, really developing, bringing the club, I don't want to say back, but obviously, you know, following Kachapoli and everything that happened, he's done a lot um, with a lot of a golden period, a little bit for Juventus. Uh, so we'll see. We'll monitor that. We'll keep you up to date on everything that happens there. Let me know, though, your thoughts on all this. What do you think about the Del Piotto situation? Would you like to see him become a uh, president of Juve? Or do you think uh, Agnelli's doing a fine job and he needs to remain for as long as possible? Are you worried about the UEFA situation? Are you worried um, that things could go awry for Juventus in the future there? Or do you think uh, that this is being a little bit overblown and that the Super League is inevitable? Uh, he's going to have to realize that whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Anyway, let me know your thoughts and opinions on all the topics we talked about today in the comments section down below. If you haven't already, please go ahead and like that video. It really does help our channel continue to grow. Like I said, it's not always about liking what you saw, but liking the video, please do that. Also, hit the bell icon to stay notified for all of our latest videos and subscribe to the channel, guys. And if you haven't already, make sure you follow Beyond Canary Zone on, at Beyond Canary Zone on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and follow myself at Justin Sofro too on Twitter. I'll see you guys next time. Forza Juve, Forza Beyond Canary.